So what sort of, so that's, a, let's, we'll, we'll cut that bit out there. You ready? If you want to give a clap, so we can. Oh man, it. you and your clap screwed the whole thing up. Blah, we are, I forgot to say where we are. Okay, ready, we go. Hello again, my name is David Watts and I have with me Ilya Krutov Hi. and we are in the break room here today um, in the one of the Lenovo buildings here in Morrisville, North Carolina and we're going to talk today about the, the new Lenovo System X 3500M5. These are, these are tower systems uh, as opposed to our rack systems that we, we also sell. Um, these systems are based on the new Intel Xeon processor, right? Right, Intel Xeon processor E5 2600 E3 product family. Yeah, and we have two systems here today to show you the difference in the drive configurations. You can see here on the right, we have a system with uh, up to 12 three and a half inch drive bays. These are hot swap drive bays. Um, the server on the right, um, let me remove the, the cover here. This cover is, is removable, just a little bit of, little bit of effort. Um, this machine has, um, Two and a half inch drive bays, um, up to twenty, up to thirty-two of the two and a half inch drives. Uh, these are just two different uh, drive combinations that are available for the thirty-five hundred M5. Is it possible to mix these drive combinations? Yeah, that's one of the big features of this system is that you can have uh, six three and a half inch drives, um, and you could have six more down here, or you can actually have eight or sixteen two and a half inch drives here as well. So you could have, for example, six three and a half inch drives and uh, 16 um, two and a half inch drives or various other combinations. And you can see basically quite a number of combinations are available there. Yeah, it's also important to mention that there is a more room for optical drive and for the additional device such as tape drive. Right. You can have uh, all the standard models come with one uh, DVD drive, DVD-ROM or multi-burner. Um, you can have a second one or one of the RDX um, units, backup units as well. So very uh, useful system because it's really an all-in-one solution. You've got all the media and storage that you need. So what's the type of customer that would use this sort of system? Well, um, so these, this is a a dual socket business critical server which is typically used in the distributed environments uh, and a small and medium sized business um, a lot of these of those systems are used in the retail industry as a uh, store store support applications they are also good for virtualization in these distrib distributed environments as well Mm, okay, great, yep. So let's look at a few of the controls and, and functions on the front of the system. I would point out that these, these are pre-GA systems. We've got these from development. Um, some of the things you'll see inside the system won't look the same uh, when you get the machine. Um, the first obvious difference is that these machines have the IBM logo on them. Uh, the shipping machines will actually have the Lenovo logo on the side there. Um, so let, what do we have along the top here, Leo? Two, two USB ports, Ryan? Yes, two, I think. USB two. These are USB yeah. 2 ports here. Um, there's USB <coughs> 3 at the back, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, this little th unit here pulls out, this is a, um, uh, a place where a customer can write um, their asset information yeah. on it, right. so um, any, any information like mm -hmm. Much better to put it there than on, on the front of the machine where it might impede airflow. Okay, along the top is the, the system LEDs and there's a, a power button as well um, just behind the door. Um, if I open up, you can see there's the power button that's yeah, uh, secured behind the, the, the bezel door. Yeah? yeah, and the door has a lock. The bezel. Yes, the door has a lock, so you can actually lock this to, to provide some, some degree of, of uh, security to prevent the, the server from being accidentally powered off. Um, now, along the side here are some more LEDs. This is the light path diagnostic panel. It's an optional feature on the 3500 M4, uh, sorry, M5. Um, um, and, and with that option then, if there are faults in the system, such as a failed drive or, or a fault with memory or, or one of the other components, then that light will, uh, re related to that, that subsystem, will light up and, and g give you um, further information uh, about, about that component. Yeah, there are also additional LEDs 
on the system board. Right. right. Yeah. So if you do have a, uh, a failure, like for example, as let's say a memory dim failed, then it will start with the system um, error log LED at the, at the front. The memory memory dim LED will light up on the light path diagnostic panel, and then inside of the system board, um, you'll see a, an LED on that particular dim socket that explains that this dim has failed and needs to be replaced. Yeah, so it's like classic implementation of light path diagnostics. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's um, have a look at the back. Um, the two, two machines are the same, so let's just take one of these away so, and turn the other one around. Okay. Okay. okay, so here we are at the back of the system. Um, there is a uh, number of slots and number of ports. Ilya, what have we got here? Yeah, so we have, uh, the system has a total of seven slots. So here, here, we go, here, here we are. So four slots on top and three PCIe slots on the bottom. And so these four slots are tied to the processor one, and these three slots require the second processor. And they are all PCIe 3.0 slots. Right. Um, differing differing um, widths depending on each interval slot. We'll look at that when we get inside the system. Um, so we also have uh, USB and Ethernet ports. So there are two USB 3 ports at the back and two USB 2. So a total of uh, six USB ports front and back of the system. Uh, there are also four gigabit Ethernet uh, ports. Um, stand those are all, all four are standard and all activated. Um, one of them, port one, can be shared with the um, integrated management module, the IMM, IMM2, um, if you wish, or there is also a dedicated IMM port as well if you want to use that instead. Depending on your systems management uh, protocols, um, policies, whether, uh, whether you want to have a dedicated or a shared management network. There's also a uh, the traditional VGA port at the back as well. Um, two power supplies. Uh, what are the choices there for those? Yeah, these are 550 watt power supplies, 750 watts, uh, 900 watts, and all of these power supplies are platinum certified, and we also have 750 watt power supplies, which is titanium certified. Right, so that's the 80 plus 80 platinum plus, and 80 right, plus titanium, right, right. right, which is a measure of how, how efficient they are, right? Yes. Yep. That's and of course, these are two hot swap power supplies, redundant pair, so that if one of the power supplies fails, or your line cord fails, or the the power connection that you're connected to fails, then the system still remains operational. Right. And does this system support GPUs? Yes. The, uh, the system actually supports up to two GPUs. Um, we'll talk about that more in a moment. They go in, in, in two of the slots, one up the top and one at the bottom. Right. Um, so, of course, if you want to have two GPUs, then you'll need both processors installed. Let's look at that in a moment. Um, there's also this little key uh, holder at the back here for the keys that open the front lock. Of course, if you plan on having the system uh, secure, then you probably don't want to leave the keys attached there. But that's where they're, that's where they're kept. OK, so that's um, pretty much all there is for the back of the system. Let's open it up and have a look inside. OK, here we are. We've turned the uh, server on its side and removed the, the side cover. Uh, before we get into the internals, I'd just like to point out, too, that this system can be converted to a, uh, a rack mount system. Uh, with a conversion kit, it's a tower, five U, a tower to uh, rack conversion kit uh, that basically allows you to install the system then into into a standard 19 inch rack. Okay, so what we have here um, is the internals of the system. There's this very large uh, air baffle. Let's remove that first. Um, I would point out that, uh, as it says on the little label right here, that by pulling this out, um, it will actually cut power to the server. So um, the blue. Uh, handles are an indicator that uh, you need to do this with the system off because if you don't, then this little con little uh, lug here connects into a uh, a power shutoff connector and that will power off the system immediately. Um, so yes, make sure your system is powered off before you remove this air baffle. So what we have inside are two very large heat sinks, which surprise surprise are the processors. These are the Intel Xeon uh, E5 2600V3. Right. Family, mm -hmm. yep. Um, now, what's the uh, what's the specs of these processors, Ilya? Yeah, these processors support up to eighteen cores, up to forty-five megabytes of uh, layer three cache, uh, and they also support integrated memory controller with four channels per processor, and mm -hmm. each channel supports up to three memory DIMMs and 
uh, memory speeds are up to 2133 megahertz. Mm. So, so three uh, DIMMs per channel, so right. a total of uh, 12 DIMMs per processor, total of 24 DIMMs for the whole system, right? Right, yep. right. So, for example, if you have the, the 64 gig LR DIMMs that we're going to be coming out with, that's up to 1.5 terabytes of memory, right? Yes. Yeah, so yes. quite a high capacity system um, we have here. All right, so let's look at the, let's go from the front of the system and then work our way to the back, shall we? So we have, of course, the, the drive bays at the front. And as I mentioned, you can uh, mix and match the uh, two and a half inch hot swap drives with the three and a half inch hot swap drives. Uh, the back planes uh, at the back of the unit, um, the back of the, the drive cages, uh, allow you to, to connect uh, these to the RAID controllers. Um, the server supports two RAID controllers for internal drives. Um, you can mix and match uh, uh, the, the configuration, um, um, but you can, for example, have one RAID controller that drives all 28, um, sorry, all 32 of the 2.5 inch drives. So if you want to have that configuration, um, one controller controlling all drives, that's certainly possible. Or you can split it up into two controllers, um, each of the two ports on the controller, uh, driving um, eight drives, eight two and a half inch drives, for example. If you have the three and a half inch drives, then one controller drives each of those six three and a half inch drives. Is it possible to have 12 drives, 12 three and a half inch drives connected to one RAID controller? Uh, no, no. If you want to have, if you want to have uh, straight three and a half inch drives, mm -hmm. you have six drives connected to one RAID controller and six drives connected to the okay. other RAID controller. Yeah, yeah. All right, so um, next, to, next in line are the um, hot swap fans. You can see there are four of them um, in this configuration here. Um, these are hot swap, as you can tell from the orange handles, so that if one of them fails and the light path diagnostic gives you a warning, um, you can see which one of the units has failed and then replace that very, very easily. Are uh, these fans redundant? Yes. Um, if you have the four, um, then, then what, it's an N plus one redundant configuration. That's right, yeah. Um, this whole fan pack is actually removable. Um, I'll show you that in a moment. It makes it very easy for serviceability. Um, so, moving along further on, uh, let's see. We've got uh, the two processors and the memory subsystem here. You can see here are the, the three um, uh, PCIe slots that are uh, driven by the second processor. That's this one here. And you've got uh, four of the uh, four PCI slots that are driven by the first processor over here. Um, the server supports full height PCI adapters and full length PCI adapters. Um, so for so example... In, in all slots, right? Not in all slots. So the, the, you, you've got support for full length cards, uh, two of them um, in, in slots uh, six and seven, and full length cards in slots, um, I think it's two, three, and four. So you can have uh, a combination of, of adapters. And if you have the full length GPUs, you would put one of them up in this area here for CPU one, and right. a second GPU would okay. be in the, in the lower half with CPU two. And what, what is this? Okay, so this unit here, this is the um, SD media adapter. It's a new, um, a new feature of our um, M5 systems. Uh, many of our M5 systems now have this. Um, this is to replace the, the built-in hypervisor um, that uh, tr traditionally was through a USB port and a USB memory key. Now we're using SD media, and this unit actually has two SD media adapters, uh, so SD media slots, I should say. Um, that means you can, if you have two SD cards, they can be configured as RAID 1. Uh, and in fact, there's enough space on these, on these cards that you can actually use these as bootle devices for other things like uh, tools, uh, uh, server guide can, can be delivered this way, or um, you might have your own um, diagnostic tools that, that you can boot the system to in the case of uh, uh, system failure that you need in the quick diagnostics. So very versatile, syst versatile system, but its primary purpose is so that you can uh, run VMware ESXi um, on, on the SD cards without needing um, operating system code installed on the drives at the front. All right, um, the unit here on the side here, this one, and there are two more on uh, the top, uh, on, under the top of the uh, of the chassis. These are the the spacing, the spaces where the uh, supercapacitors go, right, for the RAID controllers. So you've got one here and two over there. The two, of course, are for the internal RAID controllers, 
that drive the drives in front, and then the third one can be used for the ex for an external RAID controller if you have external storage. Yep. All right. Um, as I mentioned, the uh, fan the fan uh, pack actually can be removed, and that's a very easy function to do just by lifting this handle up and and lifting up like so. Uh, what I want to point out is that that um, this makes the servicing of the of the system very very easy. There are these two thumb screws uh, which uh, hold the system board down, so it's very easy to to service this this unit. Okay. One thing I should also point out too is that. Uh, at the top of the system, uh, there are two USB ports here. Uh, there is the traditional USB port for a hypervisor. That's in addition to the uh, SD media adapter that we have further down. Uh, and next to it is a USB port for the RDX um, tape drive, um, well, RDX drive, if, um, backup drive, if you w wish to use that. Um, and then further away, tucked in the corner, are two 6 gig SATA ports. Uh, these are used um, in the event that you want to configure this system with simple swap drives. As I mentioned before, the server supports hot swap drives, but if you're looking for a custom, a configure to order server with simple swap drives, um, the server does support six three and a half inch simple swap drives, and those drives are connected to the onboard uh, SATA controllers um, that, are, that are connected just there. All right, so there you have it. This is the new Lenovo System X 3500M5. Running Intel Xeon Processor E5 2600 with three product family. We hope you liked the video, and we'll see you again next time. See you later. Bye. Can I do this, Celia? Yes, you can clap.